This, this is one of the things that really flipped me out when I, was, when I was back starting in the crucified way. When we leave Egypt, we leave Egypt with a lot of jewels of the word. Physical jewels. And I came out with lipstick and earrings and all this. But I came out with other jewels. Pride. Um, you know, self, self, uh, self-worth self in a, in, a, in a prideful sense. Not in a, not in a Christian humble sense. I came out with, with uh, you know, my anger and my resentment. Here, you know, nobody's, nobody's going to walk on me. My family's going to have to pay for what they did to me and all of this sort of stuff. These are jewels. These are treasures that we come out with. And, and God has a special reason for, for all of this. And it's, it's a whole... It's a whole beautiful story. Maybe, maybe. Let's, since we're here, let's go to Genesis. This will maybe answer some of your questions about some of the things. You all know that we were in the loins of God before, right? Mm-hmm. When we were in the loins of God, did, he, did supposing we're all square seeds, did we have pride? Did we have uh, sin in our hearts? Did we have darkness? Did we have no. uh, anger? Did we have jealousy? No. Mm-mm. Not if, we were, not if we were square seeds. So I'm talking about the square seeds now. And when God came to, um, to Abraham, he told Abraham that he was going to give him the land of Canaan. You remember? And also at this point, um, it says here in, in, in Genesis 15. Genesis 15:13. Here we were in the loins of God. Okay? Up here we were a spirit and a soul, a heart and a will. And we were full of light and God's presence and everything. Okay? He showed us the new city. And there's tapes on this, and if you have questions, we can, maybe next time I come down, we can go into this. But He showed us the new city. And He said, I want you all to make the new city. But to make the new city, you're going to come down through time. Okay? And down here in time, you're going to fall into sin. So when we came into sin, we got all, all full of darkness. We weren't full of light anymore. We were full of sin. We inherited substance from Pharaoh. Is this clear? We inherited the sin of... Uh-huh. Of Adam first, came mm-hmm. and our darkness came. Mm-hmm. Our darkness came. The pride, the rebellion, the the darkness, the death. All of this came into us, and we and we got this this substance. Here it says in um, in Genesis fifteen thirteen, it says, and he said unto Abraham, Know of a surety that thy seed shall be a stranger in the land that is not theirs, and shall serve them, and they shall be afflicted for four hundred years, and also that nation whom they shall serve will judge and I will judge and afterward shall they come out with great substance. So they came out with natural substance. When they came out, they came out with, with literal literal jewels. But they also came out with a lot of, of, um, of spiritual substance. Their idolatry, um, their lack of faith, their looking at, at gods and all of these things. Uh, of Pharaoh's world. The love for money, the, the anger against Pharaoh, the resentment against the Egyptians, all of this substance they came out with. It's not good spiritual substance, it's negative spiritual substance that they came, they came with. The same as when we come down into time, we get all of these things piled on us. But of course we, cho- we chose. But these things of, of anger and pride, and it's, it's substance inside of us now that we've got to get rid of. Okay? And so... So they came down and they left Egypt. We came down into time. And it was time then for them to go through the wilderness. And here they had their literal, their literal jewels. They had their spiritual, negative spiritual substance, okay, of all of this anger and everything. And they went into the wilderness. They went into the desert. And the desert is the place where God started putting the pressure on them. To, uh, to show them all of their attitudes, their murmuring, all of their complaining, their rebellion, their unbelief, their idolatry. God led them to, from stop to stop in the wilderness to put the pressure on them, to, 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 to show them 
all of this negative spiritual substance that they had both from eternity and in their souls from the Garden of Eden that they'd inherited you all following me? Mm -hmm. as well as the, the attitudes that they'd picked up from the Egyptians so they got out in the wilderness and they came to Mount Sinai and in Mount Sinai the Lord told Moses how to make a stature and he gave them the law he gave them all of God's word at that time and it was time for them then to start building a stature okay let's go to Exodus 25 25 or 35 Exodus 35 I just had it here. <clears throat> you all, we all came out of the world. Okay? We came out with, with, our, with our attitudes. We came out with our way of dressing, our way of talking, our way of acting. And truly, we still live in a world where we still have to, you know, we're not going to be weirdos or... <laughs> or you know, like animal, animal men out of the jungle or something. We're not going to be completely, absolutely different from the people that, that we work with or that we run with in, in this world. But there's certain things that God, God doesn't want in us. And it's time, when we come into the crucified way then, it's time for us to build a stature. It's time for us to, to start building a spiritual stature inside of us, which is the, the, in, the, in their case was the tabernacle. God wanted them to start building a tabernacle out here in the wilderness so they could have access to God and have communion with God. And that tabernacle, as we all know, is a figure, a shadow, and a type of the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? So when we come into the crucified way, if we've come out of apostolic church, if we've come out of Methodist church, we, we come out also with a lot of ideas. And Okay, I can wear, I can wear pants to church, and I can, I can do this, and I can do that. There's nothing wrong with it. Um, the churches are so backslidden out, but we can come out with those attitudes. But when we come to the crucified way then, it's time to start building a, a spiritual stature. And to build this spiritual stature then, God has given us exactly what we have need of for these, for these things. That God wants us to start, to start laying up spiritual treasures instead of these, these natural treasures down here, of the riches of our flesh and the riches of our, of our natural world. And he says here in Exodus 35, verse 21, well, verse 5 first. He says, And take from ye from among you an offering unto the Lord, whosoever is of a willing heart, let him bring it an offering uh, of the Lord, gold and silver and brass and purple and blue and purple and scarlet and fine linen and goat's hair and ram skin. In other words, he, he told Israel, I want you to bring all of your gold and all of your silver, all of these things that you got in Egypt, I want you to bring them now because it's time to start building a stature. It's time to start building a sanctuary. And let's go over to verse 21. Uh, verse 20. And all the congregation of the children of Israel departed from the presence of Moses, and they came every one whose heart stirred him up, and every one whom his spirit made willing, and they brought the Lord offering to, of the work of the tabernacle of the congregation, and for all his service, and for the holy garments. And they came both men and women, as many as were willing-hearted and brought the bracelets and the earrings and the rings and the tablets, all jewels of gold, and every man that offered, offer, offered an offering of gold unto the Lord. So even the men brought the, the things that they, that they had hanging on them also because it was time to get rid of these things so that the, so that the, the tabernacle and the stature could be built. And this is the... I, it, it dawned on me when I was up in New York teaching the saints up there and a lot of them had a lot of trouble with um, separation and you know they said well all of these Bible verses they had, they had jewels and they had a lot of things in the Old Testament like we were talking about yesterday but when God said okay it's time now I want you to build a tabernacle I want you to take off the earrings and I want you to make it an offering to the Lord I want you to take off the jewelry and I want you to make it an offering to the Lord because if we could go into more studies, all of these things have to do with pride. They have to do with um, self-exaltation, uh, being, being with the in crowd and feeling good, not being a peculiar people. So he said, I want, you to, I want you to offer up that because I want to build a stature. 
we could shout right now, we could shout. <laughs> I want you to build a statue for me of the Lord Jesus Christ inside of you. And so he, he, he wants the exterior, but he also wants the interior of these attitudes and things of the substance that we have inside, that he wants that offered up for the Lord. So he, when, when it was time then to make a change and to start on a spiritual walk, he wanted their outside to definitely be changed into a people that was different from the Egyptians where they came out. And there's a psalm. I love psalm. Isaiah. Let's go to the book of Isaiah. And here they, they speak about whose heart stirred him up and the willingness mm-hmm. of the people. I mean, it was, it was like it was time, you know. Uh-huh. It was time in their heart, though, also. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. But I, we didn't force anybody. Right. And we don't force anybody. Some of our pastors might be, you know, real dogmatic or some of our saints in the church might be real, um, what's the word, uh, so nasty, mm-hmm. <laughs> that's a nicer word, zealous, <laughs> and really get on brand new Christians and all coming in or brand new people in a crucified way, but God wants it out of a willing heart, a willing heart because we understand what's connected to those things because it connects back into Egypt. And if we're going to be separated from Egypt to go into Canaan's land, there's going to be a time when we're going to say, okay, this is it. I'm going over here, and I'm going to start building a stature for the Lord Jesus Christ. If, and let's go to Isaiah 55. And this, this just blew me away. This is the first time I really got real drunk in the spirit when I... When I, mean, I mean, real drunk. I couldn't even walk. <laughs> Because it answers so many questions of why we have sin. So many questions of, of, of all of this down inside of us. <clears throat> In Isaiah 55, 1, it says, Ho, everyone that thirsteth, come ye to the waters. And ye that hath no money, come ye buy and eat. Yea, come buy wine and milk without money and without price. Wherefore do ye spend money for that which is not bread, and your labor for that which satisfieth not. Hearken diligently unto me, and eat ye that which is good, and let your soul delight itself in fatness. So God says, you don't have any money, you don't have anything to buy anything from me. But he says, yet I want you to come and buy. And so what are we going to buy with? No. That, oh, with the blood of the Lamb. No, I don't have the blood. Exchange, exchange our flesh and our human self. Exactly. We're going to give up our flesh and say, okay, the word buy here means to barter. So I give him something and he gives me back something. So I give him my flesh, I give him my resentment, I give him my fear, I give him my pride, and the blessed Lord in his goodness doesn't give me a kick in the seat of the pants. He gives me back of his nature so I can buy of him that nature that I have need of. So the more flesh I have, the more bartering power mm. I have. The more pride I have. Oh, glory. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> That's deep. <laughs> <laughs> the more rebellion I have. That's why the ones of us that are in the crucified way, we are stiff-necked. Mm. We are, I mean, we're hard-headed. Mm. He's picked the, the good ones. <laughs> Because he has a stature that he wants to build inside of us, and he knows that we've got a lot of substance <laughs> to barter with. <laughs> I this morning, last this morning when I was my God saying, why, you know, based on what you said, that some, you don't have to be in, in the push by way to be in the bride. But then I said, Lord, why did you show some people, you know, some people are going to make it and only going to do, you know, certain things because that's all they have. And then we have gotten this. So it's going to require us to be more crucified. Mm-hmm. Crucified mm-hmm. Because there are going to be degrees in the bride. Mm-hmm. And Christ's gospel bride mm-hmm. is called to the highest of the bride, yeah. the head realm of the bride. You know, you know that's something that I've, I've really fought with in my life, and it's saying, like, you know, if I go around pretending to be the holy spiritual person that, yeah. you know, I could look like or walk like an outward, outwardly really separated person and all that and I'm not inside I, I just 
I also deceive myself and I'm, and I'm trying to deceive the world and God about mm-hmm. who I am and what I am and what spiritual attainment I've, I've gotten. And I think that, you know, if I can go along and wear my, let's say, wear my jewelry to some extent until the Lord shows me or takes that away from me, I feel I'm being a little bit more honest um, and to myself and to the Lord, you mm-hmm. know, as to where I'm at and my spiritual stature and how much separation I'm willing to take. And I think God in His mercy is willing to accept that sacrifice, mm-hmm. you know, or accept wherever I'm at. And that's what I'm saying. Like, I, I don't want to be deceived by just, like, going in... Yeah given up all these things in, to look like a holy woman when inside I'm not really that. Yeah. And that's but, why I think the growing comes in and that's mm-hmm. like being patient for God to work that in you. And I mean, maybe we could, I mean, if we had like, if we were down in Jeff and we were surrounded by the saints and we could get get in the support of all them, maybe. <laughs> you know, go along with it and work, you mm-hmm. know, work it out, you know. Yeah, because a lot of people... On one side, what you're saying is, is fine because on, a lot of people, when they come out, they do just do it just because they were told to do it. But when they get over here into Egypt, sooner or later, the Egyptians catch up with them. They catch up with them yeah, we was, and they pull them back. When we came in the message, everybody was like, well, you're not supposed to wear makeup and this and that and that. Where we you so wanted to please rain. the Lord, we just slipped off everything. And then we there was us God. walking on the street, seeing this person looking all beautiful. And it's like, oh, man. Right. And, mm-hmm. and, 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 you and then I hated myself yeah. because yeah. I I was like, oh, Lord, but look mm-hmm. at me. I'm, I'm here resenting. And it's exactly. like smearing him in a way, mm-hmm. you know. And then when I just said, well, look. I'm just going to let the Lord deal with me mm-hmm. according to how he's dealing with me. It was much better. And with yeah. my husband, it was like a total shock. I did not anticipate this. He even told his friend, he said, man, I have a girlfriend that's in the message. Her husband blames me for them getting a divorce because she did the same thing. And um, he said, man, I'm telling you, she's going to... It's, she's gonna shock it. Mm-hmm. You know, it blew my mind. You know, because I did it so quick. Mm-hmm. Right. You know, I didn't want to hear nothing he had to say. You know, I'm going on for my Lord. You know, and just <coughs> Isn't there a little bit of wisdom we need to use when we're out there? It's because. If we are have it in the foundation, the stature inside of us, then when somebody comes up and challenges us for what we're doing and how we're acting, mm-hmm. we know then why we're acting mm-hmm. like this. We just can't say, "Oh well, uh, they told me to mm-hmm. do it," or um, well, good. it says here in black and white in literal translation, "This is what it says." I want it inside of me. I want that. You know, mm-hmm. I want the Lord to show me. You know what I mm-hmm. need to separate from, and He shows us. I mean, He yeah. certainly shows us. And that's what I was saying yesterday. Certain things. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. We get down and we pray about it and we start asking God, you said this, now work the will and do in me. Mm-hmm. And he gives us a space of time. Mm-hmm. But there comes a moment when he says, okay, now either you do it or. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. He doesn't give you all your lifetime to decide. He gives you, you know, he gives you a certain time, time limit. Mm-hmm. And some of us are a little bit longer and some are a little bit shorter. But look how good God was with Israel. Mm-hmm. He, gave them, he gave them a call to Canaan's land. Okay, come out, and I'm going to give you a land that's, that's, that's broad, a, a, a land that's rich in milk and honey, a land of satisfaction, a land of abundance. In Deuteronomy 8, it lists all of the beautiful land that's waiting over there. He gave them, he gave them a vision of a goal. And then when they got into the wilderness, when the going was rough, he, he lifted up a stature. He lifted up the, the, the stature of his son in the middle of them, in the, in the wilderness, and said, now this... This is the one I want you to get joined to through your blood sacrifices and, and it's through him then that you're going to get to Canaan's land. So he gave him a vision and he gave him, he gave him a vision of the Lord Jesus Christ and a vision of the bride. And then he said, okay, now, those of you that have a willing heart, now that you have a vision, now that you've seen, now that you know what's ahead, okay, come and give me. Give me your substance and give me your jewels. Give me your outside and give me your inside because I want to change it over and give it back to you with the natural, with a spiritual substance that's going to build up a stature inside of you, so that you can make my bride and make it for all eternity. He lays the blueprint, mm-hmm. the blueprint out there for us. I mean, definitely. Mm-hmm. I mean, there. but I don't think we can go in there and build the building like one day. <laughs> no. We get this blueprint; yeah. it takes a little bit of a time mm-hmm. to grow it. And, and somebody's asked me. Well, they've asked different times, but I remember a few times in particular. You know, well, how long does it take? And, and even older people, they say, well, you know, 
can I make the bride? I'm 60, 80 years old. Can I still make the bride? And basically, Israel could have gone into Egypt. Israel could have gone into Canaan's land mm -hmm. in a very short time. But because of their attitudes, their murmuring, their complaining, their rebellion, unbelief, and all of this, they had to wander 40 years out in the wilderness. Now you all, you saw the card that uh, Melanie signed for you all. <laughs> it said, welcome from the 11th hour saints. You all that are coming in, or that are really coming in in these last hours, you, you've got a responsibility to run quickly and to move quickly now in these last days because you only have one hour to make up what it's taken me, let's say, 20 years to do. God's putting, putting the pressure on you and he's not going to give you as much time maybe as he gave me to make certain decisions and to do it in my life <clears throat> because, because the journey's almost over as far as the world's concerned, as far as your life's concerned. And so your time of decision is, okay, let's, let's, start, let's start getting in with it. Let's start doing it. Let's start moving with it. And if you don't have a clear vision of Jesus and if you don't have a clear vision of the prize, then, then you can get down and you can, you can start praying and you can start begging God. Because once you get a vision, a real inner vision of, of the beauty of Jesus Christ, of His holiness, and of, of, of the righteousness that He wants to work inside of us, then it's not going to be quite as hard <laughs> to get rid of our spiritual substance, uh, our negative spiritual substance that we got from the Egyptians. It's not going to hurt quite as much to, to pull out this pride and, and to barter with him so that he can give us that beautiful substance that we've had a vision of. And so, so the responsibility is for us to get down and start screaming to God, God, help me. Help me run quickly in these last days. Help me make a decision in these last days. Help me, help me walk in a, in a right way and as we were talking the other day at the table Sister Hicks is, is, a, is a, an ideal example she was 19 when she got in the way and she started leaving off all of her makeup and her eyelashes you'll hear her talk about them you know the power of her, her big long eyelashes and you see a picture of her in, in one of her books she was, she was a very beautiful young lady and she did big eyes and, and she had to start laying off all of these things <clears throat> but she didn't get um she didn't get um, irresponsible in her appearance. She still dresses very sharp. She can stand up next to anybody in the world, and, and she dresses just as sharp as anybody out there. The only thing is she doesn't have on the gold and the silver and all of these other things that go along with, with some of the... Like I, we mentioned yesterday, it has to do with a lot of, the, of idolatry and it has to do with a lot of pride and it has to do with a lot of the Egyptians inside of our, of our being. And so... So we're to look nice. We're to look sharp for our husbands. We're not to let our hair get all goofy and... <laughs> That's so powerful how the Lord's bringing in this because we was talking about all these things and where we were sharing where when we first came to Messi, we were just stripping stuff off and we wanted to look so holy and our husband was like, man, you look bad. What's wrong? <laughs> you know, because we didn't, I guess, consciously thinking about our appearance, mm -hmm. you know, because we want, you know... We had a bad example of holiness in a way where we think holy was like, you know, walk around here, mm -hmm. humble spirit, you know, all these long <laughs> stuff out there, you know, where you don't be pleasing to <coughs> your husband, where we would draw them away from mm -hmm. us. Yeah. When I went to the church in New York, I know that was a real issue for me. We had a lot of women that were in there that were hairdressers. And, you know, it was really hard because they were quite in the world, you know, already, and it was harder for them to separate from, mm, t -t 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 -t, do a little mm -hmm. bit of this and... And whatever they did, but they were really attractive anyway. And, and I just felt like, and, and the worst thing was there were like so many single women there and mm -hmm. no single men. There were three single men and 20 single women. <laughs> and so, you know, I just lost a lot of respect for myself as a person, you know, also because I didn't have any pride in myself. <coughs> I felt like I was not attractive. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, I let these things go even though, I mean, it takes a long time to accept yourself mm -hmm. for who you are anyway. But... I felt like it was it was kind of weird too because I felt like these people who looked better than me were also getting bigger pats on the back mm -hmm. for and I felt like I was <coughs> separating more. I was the one who wasn't shaving my legs. I was the one mm -hmm. who was not getting my hair trimmed. Mm -hmm. And yet these people who looked more of the world were the ones who were getting getting patted on the back and it was really hard for me to accept. And I, I you know, I went around doing my thing, but it wasn't it was a very dark period of mm -hmm. my life mm -hmm. and of my opinion yeah. of myself. And I think, though, in a way, 
you know, part of me is to find my place where I stand with the mm-hmm. Lord so that I can yeah. stand on my own feet instead of trying to look at the other guy and yeah. all that kind of jazz. There was a, a time in, in Indiana when we, we were in between buying Sunday school curriculum from these these Christian companies that are getting so infiltrated with humanism and the preparation of our own material that we now have. There was an interim there that we didn't have anything. And so the Lord laid it on me to, to give uh, a series of lessons on on our being proud, <laughs> majestically happy, as Sister Hicks would be, but, but pride is more of what I was trying to get across, uh, of the fact that we have a high calling. We have, we, we're, we're called to something that's so much better than the presidency of a company or, or being good with the, with the boss or with the principal of the school or with the gang on the, uh, at, at school, you know, the, the kids at school. Our calling is high. Our calling is excellent. And, and it's, our twisted, it's our twisted substance inside of us that makes us feel bad and ashamed. Yeah. And it was, I was aiming at the teenagers especially, but it happens to the adults too, especially the ones that have to work out in the world. Where it is, I mean, it is a sign of, of a good position, you know, to have your eyeshadow and your your earrings and your Women, lipstick. It's I mean, uh, what, what happened to you? You are you sick? You know, you take it all off. No, that's what happened to me when I got saved and I came to work and I stripped everything off. It was like, what's wrong with you? Where's the maid? No, come on, let's go to the bathroom. <laughs> but but when you get when what I what I just said a while ago, but when you get a vision of Jesus and you get a vision of what he's calling you to, then, then you don't hang your head, and you don't go around, you know, looking like this, and what are they going to say about me? And if you do look down, you'll look down at the fringe, the blue fringe of separation, and you'll remember. Remember God told them to put a blue fringe around the bottom of, their, of the... Because it says, because every time you look at that, you'll remember the promises, and you'll remember the... the the, the law and the commandments of the Lord your thy God that has called you to be a holy nation through which He can work. So, so when 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 you when you jump this, this barrier, when you're trying to jump this barrier, and you're asking the Lord to give you a vision and of Him and of the bride and the high calling that this is, then when when you reach that point, you're gonna you're gonna always be reminded, hey, my my long hair is a sign of the fact that I'm going into the bride. My lack of, of uh, makeup is a sign that I'm going to make something higher. These people, most of them are going to be in the lake of fire, but where am I going? I'm going up to the highest of the high. I'm going to be in the bride of Jesus Christ. And I look down at my, my hairy legs and I think, well, <laughs> okay, so I'm different. <laughs> but these legs are going to dance on that, new, on that, that street of gold up there. These legs are going to get with it when I'm up there skating up and down on that river. And it won't matter then whether I've got hair or, <laughs> or fuzz <laughs> or fur on them, because it's a sign of my separation. And so I'm going to be, I'm going to be, I'm going to have a completely different attitude when my, when my substance is changed, and, and, and my my twisted thinking becomes clear in God's way of thinking. Then I'm going to, then I'm going to be, I'm going to be settled. I'm going to be happy, and I'm not going to be ashamed of my mark of being one called for the bride. It's it's a it's a it's a it's a good mark. It's not something to be ashamed of. And and the Lord will will put it in you. The Lord will help you make that. I wore lipstick. I wore earrings. I like real real fancy, fancy earrings. <laughs> I liked rings. I didn't I didn't like eyeshadow or any of that too much. I just kind of looked weird when I put it on. But you know I was in the world too. But God started one by one of those things. And the minute it was it was settled, it was settled then. Because I had a vision. I had a goal. That's to be in the bride. And now I'm getting rid of this other substance, bartering. Trying to get, get a, a tabernacle built inside of me with the with our with the flesh that I've still got gobs of inside of me. But but the the Lord's barter, what he has to offer us for these things that are so temporal, so so physical, so out of value. And when I went to Las Vegas, I think I got a super, super appreciation for the reality of, of God. <laughs> because everything's glitter, everything's lights, everything's, you know, flashy, everything's, you know, money, and you see people all dressed up. And, the world. I, I mean, it's, it's just so false, so empty. And, and they think it's the maximum to, 
you know, to be in this, this, this hall and singing or doing or being in a show. And it, it's, just, it's just so empty. And that's, that's all the devil has to offer is just a, a flash of fame and fortune and, and, and it's gone. But our fame and fortune will last throughout all of eternity. But we've got a price to pay. But look at the price we're paying. We're paying these things that are causing us so much harm inside, so much damage inside. And he'll help us. He'll help us jump that barrier. He'll help us make that step. He will do it. But that doesn't mean then that you, that you just let yourself go. It means you, you, you learn to take care of yourself in this new way. And married women have their hair up. They don't have their hair down. Uh, they dress nice for their husband. They're not just in, you know, old rags when he comes home. Crus- crucified way. It depends on the person's length of hair, don't it? Well, if your hair's, you know, the blacks, their hair doesn't go real, real long. Mm-hmm. But some some of them do. Mm-hmm. I've seen some in, in convention, though. But they, it's better, what I'm thinking about is hair like that. Mm-hmm. A married woman's not to have hair like that. She's to have it up some way. In a, not even a ponytail in a, we call it a French roll or... Or, you know, <laughs> some, some way. <laughs> but, but you fix it nice so that even though you are separated, you're still giving a very good example of your beloved in the world. So they'll look at you and they say, hey, she's, she's plain, but, but she looks sharp. Hey, she doesn't, have, I'm, she doesn't have all that stuff around her eyes. She doesn't have eye shadow. But her eyes have a twinkle that, I, you know, that's special. I wonder what's, I wonder what's wrong with her. <laughs> and it'll be a witness that'll draw them to... to you know, start questioning, you know, what's this? In the work world, you, 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 you dress nice, but you dress decently and you dress clean and, and, you know, perfume and, you know, take your bath every day and all this sort of stuff. And, and, it, and it, it's a good example to Jesus, it's like, for um, Jesus. Honey. It's like whatever is your biggest, you personally, your biggest thing that you're tra- attached to or your bigger faults, I think God works on those, like... I think probably Sister Hicks probably had a real deal with some of her outward thing, and and some of us who may not have been real caught up in all that may not have to deal as heavy mm-hmm. with it, or it may not be a real prominent thing. God might be working on something else. Yeah, I think like looking, you know, we, if we keep if we examine ourselves, like I know, you know, it's just like if you dress appropriately, try not to dress, you know, too, you know, spit. Yeah, like you know, like I know when I'm working, you're speaking about work, you know, you just wear the clothes that aren't going to reveal too much of your body and things like that, you know, just being more modest in your apparel and, mm-hmm. and things like that, you know, I think we, there's a there's a certain, we can find that mm-hmm. sense of holiness or that God, I think, wants us to have. Exactly. So our calling is a high, beautiful calling that it's worth screaming out to God for to show us, show us how to make that step. And it, it was fantastic when I, when I realized that I, I think I was in my hotel room that day, and I pounded the bed and shouted without making a lot of noise because it was an answer, you know. When, it, when it's time, it's time to change the natural Egyptian substance than for the stature of Jesus Christ. It's time to bring these things in and lay them down so he can start building a spiritual stature inside of us because he's got a, he's got a goal. And they wouldn't have made it to Canaan's land if they wouldn't have had the tabernacle to worship in and to, for the sin, the cleansing of their, of their negative spiritual substance. They never, they never would have made it if they hadn't have had the stature there. And they got the stature by taking off the exterior signs of, of Egypt and bringing in the gold and everything. <laughs> Sometimes it's awesome when you think about, like, well, you think about, oh, I have to give all this up, you know, and it's like, I try not to let myself, I just try to remember and not to freak out and about it because that is just really turns me off to think about <laughs> that kind of stuff, like that I'm going to have to give up. And, and I just calm myself down because I'm the kind of person that would be prone to being, ex, you know, anxious and you mm-hmm. strive inside yourself about these things. And I don't really think that serves God in any purposeful way. But to remember where, you know, maybe, maybe like the high calling or whatever may not be what I'm going to attain, but whatever I'm going to attain, what little, you know, what little, mm-hmm. what little step, maybe <laughs> it's maybe not a very high calling, but, <laughs> you know, but still, I can only get so far. Sometimes, like, we're only willing to give up so much mm-hmm. at such a time. Um, I'm not ashamed of it because compared to some guy out there in the world, you know, yeah. I'm probably doing all right. And for what a little I know, but 
it's it's a not it's beautiful beautiful mm -hmm. message and a beautiful uh, the, the walk. It's a beautiful walk, you know, and, and it's all laid out so beautifully and clearly, and and uh, I appreciate that. But isn't there some room for us who are like <laughs> <laughs> we just want to stay down here like babies? <laughs> don't want to grow up. I don't know. But God, God, God's got his hand on you because he hasn't let you go yeah. all of these years. He's put the seeds in, and, and I mm -hmm. understand some of that, and I thank God for the beauty of that. And, mm -hmm. and um, whatever, I mean, maybe I may not get to the bride, but maybe this is the message that will feed me. That's mm -hmm. what I appreciate, and because it does feed me, and I understand some of it. And, and it's it's a higher calling for sure. I mean, when people are out there in the world, they are looking for a, a something that's mm -hmm. more depth than the mm -hmm. kind of Catholicism and the little Christianity that's out there. And, it's so and this shy. message has it. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's I mean, you talk about those New Age things. They were they re resulted from a call for people to uh, desire for people to understand greater than they were getting mm -hmm. for their, uh, their understand their spiritual life and this is yeah, the new age is so parallel to the to the crucified way there's so many things in there that that attract the human that the same the counterpart in the spiritual in the crucified way feeds that it, they're, they're, they're right together and God God has a place for all of us, and God can use all of us. That's what Susan's saying. She can. We have a. We have a special calling on all of our lives. So God, let God, work with us and use us wherever He can. You know, like you say, um, we have a special calling in the Lord. Um, uh, purpose. Um, you know that there is a calling in your life, but you don't know what it is. So how do you cry out to the Lord to know specifically so you could start dealing um, now because probably he, he might say, okay, I want to do so, 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 so. And you'd be like, oh, not me, poor me. Like, I'm not for that. You know, where you could start dealing now with the Lord. He mm -hmm. says, okay, this is your calling. Where you could be preparing yourself to, <coughs> you know, you could get to that place. Mm -hmm. um, number one, our first calling is to be in the bride. Okay, that's that's our number one calling. Over and above everything else, we're called to be in the bride. Ministry, way in the background. Okay, now if our union with Jesus Christ, then He starts calling us to an, to some work. Then uh, what you need to do is get down and start praying and seeking God.